Today's topic is the truth about the collapsing domestic passenger jet, the C919. This was the large passenger jet China was meant to be proud of. It was heavily promoted as a domestic dream, a symbol of technology that would rival America and Europe. Yet, here in 2025, that dream has completely fallen apart. The C919 is not flying. People are now starting to talk about it, not as a source of pride, but as a national disgrace. On social media, cynical comments are flying, like Flying Coffin and The Nation's Tombstone of Face. This was all triggered by four bombshell rumors. First, the C919 is suffering from constant failures. Second, only one single unit has been delivered since 2025 began. Third, major airlines are secretly moving to place new orders with Boeing and Airbus. And fourth, the shocking report that 200 jets are already out of service and being stripped for parts. While none of these rumors can be entirely verified, one thing is now certain. The C919 National Project is already dead. And the cause of its demise wasn't external pressure, it rotted from within. Arrogance and an obsession with creating a political symbol led to it losing its true essence as an aircraft. The C919 was once hailed in the press as China's great pride. In reality, it wasn't an industrial product designed to fly, but a piece of political theater meant to prop up the regime. When you compile the testimonies from insiders, a common picture appears. The C919 was never a technological triumph. It was a national myth. At the heart of development was COMAC. Their primary mission was not to build a plane that could fly, but to show positive results in their reports. Broadcasting successful flight footage on state television was simply the means to stage a national victory. To achieve that, safety, efficiency, and profitability were all ignored. In the airline industry, the most important factor is fuel efficiency. However, the C919 uses 15% more fuel than its competitors, the Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A320neo. That is a fatal flaw in this business. Every single flight has become a patriotic but loss-making operation. So why do the state-owned airlines continue to buy it? The answer is simple. It is an order. Political necessity is put above all profitability or actual demand. It's a system where the country is basically forcing itself to buy its own goods. An economist offered this comparison. It's like a father making his successful older son buy the failed products of his younger son. The family appears prosperous from the outside, but in truth, money is just being moved from the left pocket to the right. The C919 was born during a time when China still believed in the global economy. Its leaders then believed that cooperation with America would last. This is why the engines, the avionics, and the controls are almost entirely Western-made. It appears made in China on the outside, but its guts are European and American. This was the starting point for the fantasy of a domestically produced Chinese jet. And two decades later, this exact structure became a fatal trap. If the West halts engine exports, not one C919 can be finished. Its independence was only on paper. Internal conflicts made things worse. It was a turf war between the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, AVIC, and COMAC. The two groups were meant to cooperate on development, but in practice they undermined each other over who would get the credit. Because of this, the design fell behind, engine development stalled. Internal corruption simply killed technological evolution, and today China is paying the price. It was not just technology that doomed the C919. The most critical problem was the collapse of its funding. Inside COMAC, the main company for development, the money was vanishing. This project was originally a national affair, betting the country's prestige. Massive tax revenues were invested, and huge subsidies flowed to associated companies and local governments. However, much of that was not used for the actual development. Payments to subcontractors were halted, and factories couldn't even get materials. Meanwhile, executives were driving luxury cars and holding extravagant parties. According to one whistleblower, the books showed progress, but the actual work had stopped. To hide this contradiction, COMAC held repeated test flights just for the cameras. 
Every time news of a successful flight was broadcast, the real development was temporarily paused. The development was like a performance. Behind the curtain, the engineers grew exhausted and lost their will. We are not building an aircraft, we are building news footage. The words of one engineer said everything. Even more severe was the collapse of the financial division. Project funds were flowing through financial firms like China Aviation Trust and Zongshao Investment. However, starting in late 2024, these firms began to fall into management crises, one after another. The reason was investment failures and fraudulent misuse. The money was funneled into real estate and stock speculation, not the airplane. The funds vanished, suppliers could not be paid, and parts deliveries halted. The factory went quiet, and the assembly line has been motionless for over six months. Yet official announcements insisted production was proceeding smoothly. The gap between reality and reports was truly wings of fiction. In spring 2025, internal whistleblower reports began surfacing. Engineers, accountants, and subcontractor presidents. The stories they told were remarkably consistent. Leadership demanded statistics, not engineering. The factory floor was allegedly passing off prototypes as production units. Safety tests were reportedly filmed and then immediately canceled. It was like a company-wide fabrication. These accounts spread on Chinese social media as the C919 incident. Authorities promptly started deletions. Related accounts were suspended and searches were made impossible. But the fire was already spreading. On video sharing sites, the tag, the plane that doesn't fly, began trending. From national pride to a national laughing stock, its fall was shockingly fast. In June 2025, Bloomberg put out a bombshell report. China's main airlines had placed new orders for 500 Airbus and 500 Boeing aircraft. This signaled they had abandoned the domestic jet. Publicly, they were patriotic, but privately, they chose survival. The C919 was commercially finished. Its fuel efficiency is terrible and maintenance costs are high. Regardless of patriotism, a company will fail with numbers like those. The statistics tell the tale. In mid-2025, the C919's average daily service time was 2.6 hours. Compared to the 9-plus hours a day flown by competing Boeing or Airbus jets, this is essentially non-operational. A plane that doesn't fly. That is the domestic jet's reality. U.S. sanctions were the final death blow for the C919. In 2025, Washington started to phase in a freeze on engine and avionics exports. Releasing it would be a political choice. In short, the C919's destiny was now entirely dependent on the White House's mood. Even so, the Chinese government declared it would counter by pushing for full domestic production. They placed their hopes on the domestic CJ-1000A engine. The team leading this development was the same one that handled the WS series of military engines. But problems were everywhere. Shafts fractured during vibration tests, and explosion incidents plagued combustion tests. The durability of high-temperature components was less than half the standard. With every test, the technical limits were revealed. Even in 2025, the engine's completion rate was just 40%. An optimistic projection put commercial use in the 2030s. Engineers on the ground agreed. It won't be ready for another 10 years. Yet, the government didn't halt the propaganda. State media continued to report, test success, progress on domestic engine. But internal documents revealed this successful test was merely an ignition check. They hadn't even achieved stable operation of the engine alone, let alone flight test. The engineers who knew the truth despaired and quit. Some emigrated to America or Canada, getting new jobs at Boeing or Pratt & Whitney. We worked hard for our country, but we were just used as tools to hide the truth. That feeling captured the mood on site. The dream of domestic technology was sacrificed for political goals. In fall 2025, it was announced 3,035 C919s were scheduled for delivery. Yet, in reality, only eight units had actually been handed over. Of those, just four entered regular service. The others are undergoing adjustment, in inspection, or simply sleeping in hangars. 
Still, state TV kept airing its evening news, showing smiling pilots and broadcasting that the domestic jet was taking to new skies. Truly, a pride that doesn't fly. And then a symbolic incident happened. In October 2025, a C919 was on display at an air show. A spectator who got close took a photo of a small plate affixed to the side of the fuselage. Etched on it in English was this, Engine Leap 1C, made by CFM International. In short, its heart was completely American. Under the sign of a domestic jet, it was proudly displaying its foreign-made core. The picture instantly went viral on social media, and the comments exploded. A domestic lie. It has no right to call itself Chinese-made. Angry voices erupted, and authorities deleted the posts and detained the people involved. But what they could not erase was the public's memory. The C919 transformed from a national symbol to a symbol of national disappointment. Even so, Beijing refuses to admit defeat. There is just one reason to continue this project. Face. Halting it would mean the trillions of yuan invested were all for nothing. In other words, it would be an admission of political failure. That is what they cannot allow. Therefore, the purchase orders to airlines are still being enforced. They are forced to buy it, knowing they will never make a profit. It is no longer business. It is a national ritual. At the end of 2025, a Chinese economist wrote anonymously, the C919 is not an airplane. It is a political wing. That single sentence was instantly erased, and the editorial office was forced to close. But those words were the truth. This project showed not the limits of technology, but the limits of the system. Faking pride, even with lies, has become national policy. That is the greatest tragedy for China's aviation industry. The world now knows. The day China becomes a truly independent aviation power is still far off. The C919's failure is not just about one aircraft. It is a reflection of the Chinese state model itself. The limits of a controlled economy, the sickness of bureaucracy, and a society where the truth cannot be spoken. When these three things intersect, any project will inevitably collapse. The C919's downfall is the result. Finally, one ironic story. On the day the C919 reportedly succeeded in its first flight, at that very same time in America, a new Boeing model had just completed an unmanned round-the-world test flight. That single difference tells you everything. China has not yet mastered the skies, and it continues to look away from a truth that is even higher than the sky.